My name is Renu Kahari and I'm a massage therapist who's specializing in oncology. And today I'm talking here for, on behalf of the Carolina Breast Fans, where I volunteer once a month. Um, and I, this is one of my favorite topics, breast tissue health. And I speak about this education, care, and lymphatics. So uh, I do realize that my accent is a little different. So if you are not able to understand me, please uh, feel free to interrupt so that I can repeat whatever I've just said. And I'm perfectly okay with that. Um, I, uh, I've been a massage therapist now for 11 years and or which past six years I have been doing uh, oncology work. And that is definitely my passion. Um, I love helping people with that. And uh, there is a personal side to this. I lost both my parents to cancer. Um, I, my father has been 30 plus years and for my mother, it has been um, about 18 years now. And hers was breast cancer, which metastasized to lungs and then to brain. So, and unfortunately at that time, I did not know anything much about cancer. I was here and she was in India and it was very hard. Uh, and there wasn't, uh, internet was not as prevalent as it is today. So gathering information was that much more difficult. And uh, so I think when I went into this line of massage therapy, I started looking into whether people with cancer could be helped. And sure enough, I found out that yes, they can be helped. And uh, so I am very happy with my chosen field. And I do the regular kind of massage as well, but uh, helping people with cancer, helping them regain range of motion or just feeling, um, you know, helping them get some relief from pain, helping them understand what all things they can do for themselves and not just to be dependent upon the visits to the clinics for that, but what they can do at home to help themselves is what uh, I like to do. So client education, I feel is very, very important that way, client or patient education. Um, I'm also an, uh, an aesthetician. So, and again, I went into that because I wanted to, I got quite a few clients early on when I started doing um, oncology massage who had uh, cancer in the face and around the lymph nodes and on their throat. And so they wanted to know what kind of uh, um, products to use on the, to help with their skincare. And their medical team was not able to answer that at that point. And so I decided to go back to school and become an esthetician. And then I followed that up by doing a course where I became an oncology certified esthetician so that I could make the suitable changes to help people with cancer about their skincare. Um, and when we're doing oncology massage, we pay a lot of attention to lymphatic drainage. Now oncology massage is a specialized training that affects the side of, uh, that addresses the side effects of cancer and its treatments. Uh, there could be potential for swelling and sometimes it, Things happen right away. Sometimes it takes a lot of time for it to show up in the body. And especially things like lymphedema, even though the treatment may be over, lymphedema can manifest any time. It can even come a few years down the line and it doesn't really show up that obviously for some people. Um, and for some, it is very, very noticeable. And so that is something that really needs to be uh, kept in mind first and foremost when doing, uh, when touching anybody's body and starting the treatment. And that's why the massage needs to be modified. And, and I, uh, there are certain things we do keep in mind. One is mainly the lymph node removal. Where have the lymph nodes been removed? That will determine how to progress with the session. What medications are they on? Are they having any medical devices? Are those devices external or are they implanted in the body? Uh, what is their blood cell count? Do they have fatigue? And what kind of treatment was given? Was it just chemo or is it a chemo and radiation and or surgery? What was done to them? All these need to be answered extensively 
And I have a completely different questionnaire for my clients who have undergone cancer treatment. So they have to answer my regular questionnaire and the one that I have for oncology in order that I might um, gather sufficient information before I even start working on them. Now, I want to explain just in layman's terms as to what the lymphatic system is and how it is, um, how it differs from circulatory system. Now, lymphatic system can be considered part of the circulatory system, but at the same time, it stands out as a system of its own. Now, the circulatory system, everything is moving up towards the heart. So the venous flow happens back towards the heart. And at one point, um, and then the heart pumps the fresh blood out back through the arteries and which carry uh, the nutrients to all the cells in the body. Now the lymph nodes also, they kind of interact at one level with the blood, uh, blood vessels, especially the veins and they carry the waste back to the heart. So now what is lymph? Uh, lymph is metabolic waste. So whenever we eat or drink something, or say even we are inhaling air, whatever, the cells take the nutrients, whatever they need, they process all those nutrients, and then what is not needed is expelled by the cell. So now whatever has been expelled by the cell is lying there waiting to be picked up by the veins, by the capillary network and take it back towards the heart. But that process is very, very slow. And so if you uh, visualize a sponge and you see all the holes in the sponge and this gap between the holes as well. So just imagine the hole is, a uh, is the cell and uh, it has done whatever it needs to be and it pushes the waste out. And now that waste is lying there between one um, hole in the sponge and the next, which we can consider as cells. And it's just lying there. And if, in time, if the sponge is not being cleaned out, all that will start to smell, it'll just start to accumulate and get sticky and messy. It's the exact same thing with the um, body. If things are not being moved about in a timely manner, it'll just sit over there and cause even more uh, stress on our body systems. And so that is why it's important that we lead an active lifestyle. And the way the lymph moves is that it has one way valves just like the veins. And so there is, it is so that the flow doesn't go back into the cell. So it keeps moving forward. And you can see that the lymph nodes, when I enlarge this, um, I don't know if you're able to see this, but lymph nodes are, it's like a series of little, um, what should I say, like a series of little buttons almost. They're just like grains of rice and the lymph moves very slowly from one to the next and to the next and to the next until they all meet up with the capillary network of the, uh, of the veins and which takes it back towards the heart. The thing with lymph, the great thing about lymph is that it can be moved and it's very easy to do. It actually responds very well to movement and can even, if uh, you feel that you are leading a sedentary life and you're not able to move around much, can you move limb still? Yes, you can. And I will explain how that is done in a little later. Uh, it can also be moved through a device. I know um, many uh, hospitals do suggest or doctors suggest um, a lymphatic pump so that they're not feeling the stress on the body as the lymph is still being pumped. So that also helps. And hydration is the biggest helper. If you're not consuming half your body weight in ounces in water every single day, it's gonna be very, very hard to move the lymph. Now, where is lymph found? It's everywhere in the body, but is especially clustered around joints, around the hip, around the underarms, which is called the axilla, and here around the throat, right over here at the base of the throat and along the sides of the neck. And the reason why it is, uh, it is clustered around joints, because joints are meant for movement, but quite often since we are talking about uh, breast health over here, 
if you will see, it is all here around the underarm area. And we are not moving our shoulders the way we are supposed to move. We are often sitting still for long hours working on computers. We don't, we hardly ever move our neck, let alone move our body. And so by the end of the day, everything is stagnating. And so things need to be, um, it's good to take breaks and it's good to walk around. And I think all, uh, nowadays, nearly all physicians recommend that. And uh, that is a very good thing to do because we are not just, um, Energizing the body that way we are also helping the lymph move and lymph moves very 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 slowly So any movement is better than no movement at all um, Lymph is controlled by the spleen and Spleen is one of the main uh, organs that also supports our immunity And so if anybody has ever been in a car crash, I mean a really bad car crash the first thing they will try to do the paramedics is to save the spleen because if the spleen is uh, damaged, recovery becomes next to impossible. And the lymph is also a sanitation system. Uh, and of course, if things are not kept clean and sanitized in the body, then how is immunity ever gonna work? Now, there are several uh, layers of nodes everywhere. We, um, for some people, they're particularly sensitive and you can feel the nodes very close to the surface, but there are also intermediary layers and deeper layers. Um, there are also something called sentinel nodes, which is the very first node that uh, whenever a biopsy is done, they inject a dye and then they see where the dye travels to. The very first node that it hits, that is called the sentinel node because it is a node that is guarding all the other nodes around it. Clustered around the joints, obviously to facilitate uh, drainage through movement. It responds very well to stimulation and so you, I'll show you some very good techniques, very simple technique actually that you can do anytime, anywhere. The more you do it, the better it is for your body. You can do that sitting, standing, going for walks, watching TV, uh, reading a paper, whatever it is, it can, can be done anywhere. Just one more reminder that uh, lymph has one way valves only. So there is really no right, wrong way of moving the lymph. Um, actually, let me say that. There is a correct technique of moving it, but if you do happen to go the wrong way, it doesn't really hurt the body because like I said, lymph moves very slowly, so it can be corrected. And hydration, I cannot stress this in, uh, often enough. Hydration is the key for the body to function properly. Now, how to take care of breast tissue, and I will talk about female versus male. Uh, what is the difference? Um, healthy versus post-op, the signs and symptoms, techniques, positions, the frequency, do's and don'ts, and the lymphatics of it all. The main difference between the uh, female versus male breast tissue is that the female tissue has more fat and the male tissue is more muscle. So as you can see, the female tissue has fat and this fat kind of you know, spreads over here into the pectoral muscles and here along the sides and in the underarm area. Um, now you can ask me what is the breast tissue then? Is it just this? No, the breast tissue starts right from here and goes all the way down the sides and comes below the breast close to the diaphragm and all the way across the body. So it is quite a sizable area that is considered breast tissue. And yet we often always think that this alone is breast tissue and that is not uh, the case at all. But uh, so what makes women so susceptible to breast cancer is that the male breast tissue is mainly muscle, but toxins love fat and the female breast tissue is fat. It's mainly fatty tissue. And so that's where the toxins love to hide. And so that is why we see more and more instances of breast tissue. But if you were to look at this diagram, I mean, look at this illustration, uh, you can see that how well the breast tissue is protected. It has such a great mechanism of lymph nodes guarding it on all, all sides. I mean, you're seeing here, it's also here around the sides, as you can see in this uh, um, illustration on the right. 
and it's very well protected. It runs all the way down in the center of the body along the uh, sternum. It's there across along the collarbone and it's also over here on the sides. And uh, so it does, there is an excellent way to drain the body because of this, because if one lymph node cannot pick it up, we can always try and reroute it so that the other lymph nodes can pick up whatever one is not able to do. And as you can see here very clearly, you know, the, lymph node, the lymph nodes are very small, but you can see how they move on from one to the next to the next. It's pretty much like passing the baton. And their capillary network is very, very, very extensive because lymph needs to be everywhere in the body. Now here are three main ways to, um, what should I say, palpate the breast tissue. And these are the guidelines set by the American Cancer Society. And I like to, uh, and the American Cancer Society has actually recommended the middle one that you see to go in an up and down pattern. That is the one that they have recommended. But I like to focus a little bit more on this uh, last one, which is why I kind of highlighted that. And um, just uh, take a minute. You know, if, you, if you have some, if you don't act, I really cannot see most of you, so it's okay. Um, so if you want, you can put your hands on your waist and just stand and just stand tall and just pay attention to your breasts. How is it looking? How is it feeling? And look at the complete breast tissue, right from the collarbone down to um, the bottom of the ribs and along the sides of the body. How, um, look at uh, this BAN is breast, the areola and the nipple. Look at everything, stand in front of a mirror and just look and look at the shape. How is it looking? Is one side bigger than the other? What is the size? How is it looking? What is the weight? Again, when you were to hold the breasts, support them on both sides, the how does one side feel compared to the other? What is the temperature? Does one side feel overly warm? And if it feels warm, why is that so? Have you ever mentioned that to your doctor? And is, is the, if you're wearing a bra, is it leaving marks on your skin? And if it's leaving marks on your skin anywhere, whether it's here along the shoulder, or along the um, cups or along the band that goes around the body. If, it, if it's leaving a mark on your skin, it is not moving the length. And the same goes for even a, watched, uh, a wristwatch band or a bracelet or a ring that is too tight. If it's leaving a mark on your skin pretty much, or even socks actually, the sometimes socks leave a mark on the uh, calf. And if it, if it is doing that, then yeah, it is stopping lymph. And if you're already compromised because of cancer uh, and you're prone to lymphedema, then it, it just got a little bit more worse. And so uh, that is all the more reason for you to be more and more proactive about taking care of this. Um, so I always like to start with this and to just stand there in front of a mirror and just to look and observe. And if you have um, somebody else in the house with you, just have them look at you. Just be objective about it. There's no need to judge your body, nothing, no reaction or anything. You're just standing there, just looking at your body in a very clinical manner. What is happening over here? And also watch your posture while you are at it. Sometimes a breast uh, on one side might feel like it's hanging lower than the other just because of the way we are standing. Are your shoulders even to begin with? That alone sometimes determines everything because the way we use our body determines how the muscles, the surrounding muscles of the breast tissue also why and how they work. Um, try looking at your body in different positions. So, so when you're standing with hands on waist and just looking at it, the breast tissue can look and feel different than say if you were lying down. And now for women, if you're lying down, the tissue tends to splay out. And so that can have a very different feel. 
Then if you were to lie on your side, now the breast tissue can feel different on this side, especially here in the upper part of the chest, of the, or let's call it the pecs. And if you were to turn to the other side, it can feel quite different on this side. So it all depends. Now for men, if the uh, men are, the men also undergo hormonal changes as they're approaching you know, late 40s and 50s. And that's why that uh, word moobs, male boobs has been coined because um, yes, it happens. And so that is an excess of estrogen in the body. And so sometimes even the pecs, instead of lying flat, they do tend to droop a little bit. And it's a little bit of excess fatty tissue, but even that can be drained in the exact same manner as the female breast tissue. And now here we come, the, this slide is all about how to take care of the breast tissues. So, I have just marked it very simply as one, two, and three. So one is this area right here. So if you can all feel your collar bone, you know, where it meets up in the center of the body. Right here, this is called the clavicular notch. There's a little kind of dip over here at the base of the neck. And that is the number one position. That is where all the nodes come and meet up together. And they go down the sternum, which is in the center of the body towards the spleen and the heart. And so that is the number one. So I want you to open up your hands and just place it like this along the collarbones. So you have, um, like right now I'm using my right hand. So I have four on the left hand side and my thumb is on my right. And you're just going to drag your hands very, very softly and tenderly. Just imagine stroking a baby. And you're going to pull your hands towards the center and you're gliding it along the collarbone on both sides. And you just want to pull it this way towards the center. Very simple. And if you can do this anywhere, anytime, and I know it can be done. It's as simple as some people have the habit of twirling their hair. And so I know that this is as simple as that. The more you do, the more the lymph moves. And what it does by doing this is that we are creating, since lymph is a liquid, it's creating an uneven pressure in the body. So now that after doing 10 to 15 strokes, preferably after drinking uh, some water, and uh, so that the lymph cells are plumped up, all the cells are plumped up, and so it helps to do their activity, that metabolic activity, that much faster. And then once you're done that, then move on to number two. So number two is coming here from the shoulder joint towards the center. So we are just going to move it along. You don't have to raise your hand. You can even drop your arm. The arm doesn't have to be raised. So you can do this sitting. You're watching your favorite TV show. Heck yeah, you can do this. As easy as that. And then we, let's do the other side as well. One, one side to the other. And every now and then we do one 10 to 15 times. And come back to the center. And we again keep stroking this. Just remember to be very gentle. This area, the skin is much thinner and so it can tend to become red and flushed very fast. And so we don't really want that to happen. And so um, after you've done that, then the third position is here. Now you can raise your arm, just cup it just here, underarm. Just cup it there very gently and release. Just press very softly and release. We just adjust the screen so you can see that. Press and release, press. I'm doing it a little bit more exaggerated so you can see that in the camera, but you don't really have to press very hard. Just enough to feel that, okay, yeah, there is something there. Press and release and same thing. Now we go to this side, press and release. And the pressing is not straight up. You're kind of trying to press this way towards the collarbone, towards the center of the body. So you're going to move it this way. This way. 
and after you do that a few times and then we're going to come to this now i want to, uh, let's start with the right breast now i want you to see how the breast is this is the globular part of the breast and uh, i have just divided the breast into different numbers just like a clock so we are starting at 12 o'clock which is right here at the top and then i have two o'clock position here on the inside four o'clock again on the inner part of the breast and then six o'clock is directly below eight and ten are on the out outer sides of the uh, body uh, so we are going to start at 12 o'clock and push it up very gently as gently as stroking a baby and why are we doing this after we do these three is because now all this has been cleared now when you come to the 12 o'clock position which is right here and you're trying to move this up it has some place to go now if we did not do these steps one two and three now it would just get congested because all this has not been moved and we are just dumping more and more over there and as it is lymph moves super slowly so we need to give it all the help that we can so after we do this and try to do each one at least 10 to 12 times the slower you go the better there's no race over here uh, then we move on to number two and we are going to push that and number two is going towards the center of the body so just remember that here all along the sternum which is the breastbone going the middle of the body there are lots of lymph nodes over there too so two three four five they're all going to be draining towards the midline of the body very simple you can even do hand over hand if you like easy easy going and then when you get to number six that is a little more difficult especially for women because that's where the breast tissue is heavy and so it helps to kind of pick up the tissue a little bit and then just very gently pull it up here from the side and then very gently drain towards the center Now everybody's hands moves differently. So for some people, it's easier to drain towards the center as you're getting, you know, um, closer to say number four, five, six, seven, and eight. But for some people, it may be easier to drain to the outer side of the body. And so that um, is all entirely up to you, how it moves. And some people are more comfortable holding the breast in the same, say if it is your right breast you're comfortable holding it with your right hand and then using your left hand to move for some people they're more comfortable using it with holding it with the left hand and then using the right hand to move so it all depends how your um, how your hands and body works together so that only you know and i will know only when i see you in action so i cannot tell you that now um, so and then when you come to the outsides you just want to drain that you can again start with number 12. The more you do number 12, the better, because that is what is gonna be activating everything to move from the outer corners of the body here on the right side of the breast. And then when we come to the left side, or rather um, on the right side over here, Oh, I think I wrote the wrong information over here. So yes, so this has to be the left side. We are again going to follow the 12 o'clock position. And then we can go to the 2 o'clock. And keep draining first. And every now and then keep coming back towards the center. And then once you do that, you can again start at 12 o'clock. And start moving more. And then the four o'clock. And the six o'clock. Then when you come towards the center, we're going to move again towards the breastbone, the midline of the body. And 
then we again come back here and train. And if possible, please get up and drink some water because I'm going to be drinking some. If the lymph has been moved, you will feel thirsty just by doing these soft and gentle strokes. It's crazy how that how the body uh, uh, tells you right away what it needs. Now I want to, and um, this particular um, screen, I'm uh, happy to share that with you all so that you can, uh, you can practice at home. Um, what I would say, suggest is printing it out, put it in a sheet protector, stick it on your bathroom mirror so that it is over there. And so there is no excuse. So even as you're brushing your teeth in the morning with one hand, you can still be doing this action with the other. It's as simple as that. And this is another one. I just want to drive home the point about underwire bras. Now, I also love underwire bras. <laughs> I won't say that. I don't wear them. Uh, but I have really, really minimized my use of those bras now. So, and I just wanted to show how this is coming right where the lymph nodes are. You know, this is just a picture, just, uh, you know, kind of generalizing, but for some people, the lymph nodes can run uh, much deeper and into the curve of the breast. And for some people, it is a little bit less. But uh, either way, this bra things, they are very, very tough. And I'm having one from an old bra of mine, and I can show you, this doesn't really bend all that much really digs in and it's very, very hard. And the reason why I had to pull this out was because yeah, it started digging in and I couldn't stand it anymore. And if we all have some extra weight around here, the sides of the body, then yeah, we're going to feel that pressing into the flesh. And it is not a good thing. The best to avoid that and to wear a sports bra but I, even if you were to wear a sports bra, I just want you to be careful because like I said, make sure that it fits comfortably and that it's not leaving mark on your body. No matter what kind of bra it is, if, it, if the straps are leaving marks on the body, it is not good. I have seen people where the straps are pretty much digging into the skin and so it has left a deep depression over here and that is not good. Because over time, it's just going to be, and you know, and I'll tell you why it is not good. I mean, you just look, look at this. That strap is digging right here, which is the main channel for it to flow towards the sternum, right here. And if the strap is coming down there, it is obstructing the flow of lymph so much. So just think about that a little bit. And here are some do's and don'ts. Always check with your physician if the... MLD is manual lymph drainage. That's what we're doing over here. We're manually moving it if it's okay for you. And I mentioned dry brushing because I have some other tools I'll just show you that you can use that as well. Um, but you've got to hydrate really, really well. Most of us underestimate the amount of water that we are drinking through the day. It really doesn't... Uh, I, I'd say we don't drink enough. So if you can keep track of your water by buying one of those jugs where everything is marked so that you know exactly how much you're drinking and set yourself something at, this, uh, at the top of every hour, I'll be drinking a glass of water. And one glass is eight ounces. So if you've got to be drinking at least half your body weight in water, that is good. But then if you would, again, expecting water to do all the work, that is again, not good. Because you've got to be active, you've got to be moving, you've got to have, uh, you'd be eating a healthy diet. Uh, your lifestyle needs to be supporting the function that the water needs to do for you. So just uh, keep that in mind. Then visually inspect your breast tissue often. Don't just pay attention to it only when something comes up. And look at it in different positions, standing and lying down, lying on one side or the other side, or lying face up if the breast looks different. If they, again, if there is somebody in your family, um, like your husband or a significant other, who can help you, uh, that would be really helpful. And always look for changes. 
nipple retraction, unexplained bruising, rashes. If you, if you suddenly see an unexplained bruising just happen overnight, they bring that to you, your doctor's attention right away. Nipple retraction is another big thing. And that is because something may be tugging on the breast tissue from the inside, you know. And that's why I say always look at the complete breast tissue, B-A-N, breast, areola, and the nipple. It's not always just, you know, what the, the, the globular part of the breast. Look at it completely right from the collarbone down, right till the ribs, till the bottom of your ribs, if you can, and along the sides of the body. Everything is breast tissue. And don't wait till something happens. Always be proactive. And this is a very, very good way. It's a great starting point to help improve the flow of lymph in this area. And another great thing that it does is just by doing this, it is also going to drain from here as well. And so if you have any congestion over here and here, all that will eventually start to drain down as well. So there are many, many um, benefits for just draining this one area. And if anything is inflamed, don't press on it, don't think. Initially, when I started doing all this, I felt that the congestion increased. And that is because, yes, the body is responding well, so that is a sign. But it, like I said, lymph moves super slowly, so you've got to be patient and keep persevering. But if you feel that sometimes a lymph node has gotten swollen, then please go and see your doctor because again, an antibiotic might be required for that. Don't just keep thinking that, hey, it's gonna subside because if it's not subsided in a couple of days, you need to go see your doctor. There are too many lymph nodes involved over here and we do not know what, is, what exactly is causing that inflammation. And again, don't just focus on one area, focus, look at the entire breast tissue from collarbone to diaphragm and your sides. And again, don't do MLD if you have any um, issues, inflammation, congestive disorders, or to certain autoimmune diseases, you know. Um, sometimes it's best to run it by a health expert, a doctor, a physician, before you start to do anything like this. Uh, any questions that anybody has? Leslie, have you gotten any questions from anyone? No? Okay. No, but that was excellent. Thank you, thank you. Please I, feel I, free to ask a question of Renuka if you have one. Yeah. Just unmute yourself and ask me a question and I'm happy to answer that. I think you explained it very well. There may not I, be any questions today. I have, <laughs> yes, I have a yes, question. Okay. I joined a little late, but how often should you do this? You can do this every day as often as you possibly can. Okay. The more you do it, the more it'll help your body. But having said that, I would say don't go overboard. If you can do that at least two, three times a day, that's really good. Like I said, you start off in the morning while you're brushing your teeth. You can do that. You can even do this in the shower because that way, you know, the skin is slick with soap. And so you're not hurting and uh, you're not um, making this area red. It turns red very fast because the skin here is so much thinner. And so you can do that uh, in the shower and in the shower, pick up your breast tissue and really look at it, touch it, palpate it in all directions. Um, that really helps. It, at, at other times at home, if you can apply some lotion, a really creamy uh, emollient uh, lotion or um, uh, oil. If you have any kind of aromatherapy oils, you can even use that if you like. Just mix it with a carrier oil, rub that on your hands, warm it up and then apply it everywhere so that the hands are sl uh, slippery and they move. You know, it has a good glide to it. At the same time, not so slippery that everything just, you know, slipping right off, but you, you're still able to do it and do it slowly. Just be gentle. It's like stroking a baby's skin. You know, if you can just do this, how gentle is that? 
And I just wanted to show these two before I forget. If you want, you can even use this. This is a facial brush. And you can use this. This is super, super soft to touch. And you can use that over here. Like you can just go along the collarbone. You can use this along the whole breast tissue. Just follow those numbers, the 12 o'clock, the two o'clock, and just use this brush to move it in the direction. And if you feel that you can use this in the underarm area as well, this is just a regular body brush. Make sure that it is one that has uh, natural bristles. Now the bristles can feel a little rough and well bristly, but uh, they actually help stimulate. Now I wouldn't use that over here because like I said, the skin here is much thinner, but it works great for doing it underarms and along the sides of the body. And if you want, you can even get it to the back. Sometimes it, it even helps here with some shoulder uh, and neck issues. So sometimes it's just congestion because you're not moving this the way it should be moved. Uh, Renuka, how can you tell if the um, nodes are, um, for lack of a better word, like impacted? Like if you're a bodybuilder and you're constantly working the pec area um and you know if you feel that you feel like lumps like all around because you're working that area what's the difference between the workout versus an impacted um lymph node so if the lymph node is swollen it will be painful so painful. even the gentlest of touch will cause pain Okay. It'll be very uncomfortable. Like I said, you're stroking your body like you're touching a baby. Right. But, you know, uh, but when you're massaging someone, that's why uh, in, even when you're doing manual lymph drainage, um, the touch is very soft. It is firm, but it's still right. very soft because we are touching and we're feeling what is happening over there. And, you know, uh, most of the time, if, the, uh, if, so, if there is inflammation, it is usually happening in the superficial tissues because... That is the body's way to convey to us that, hey, something is happening here, take some action. You know, after all, the body is a very intelligent design. Right. And so the body, that, that is how the body conveys to us. So just because something is happening, on a, we are feeling something on a superficial t uh, um, level, it doesn't mean that something is not happening on a deeper level. So that is a signal for us to go and see a physician and say, hey, you know what, I'm feeling this. So can you please take a look and tell me what's going on? And then it's up to them to you know, recommend whether it's a mammo or an ultrasound or a th even a thermogram. And I work on a lot of people who have um, had thermograms done. A thermogram, um, that is, let me just quickly show a picture here. I, I did not put that in the slide. It looks like this. Mm. So all the red ones are all the inflamed areas. And then after massaging it, you know exactly where to go and how to drain now. And then it becomes like this. Okay. And nice. it is non-invasive. You know, mammogram, yes, it's still radiating the body to some degree. And, uh, you know, whereas uh, ultrasound uses sound waves to create images and uh, thermogram uses heat to create that image. And it is very helpful. And I think there are quite a few places here in Charlotte, uh, at least three of them that I know of, that, uh, and of the three of them, two of them offer full body scans, if you want. And so it's a very good way of knowing. Like as if somebody has digestive issues, you don't know what's happening, get a thermogram. And when somebody has something, you're wondering what's going on in the breast, do a thermogram. Now, I also work with a lot, quite a few um, plastic surgeons in the area. And so I have seen a fair amount of breast uh, reconstructive surgery. And, uh, you know, and I teach them, you have to educate the patient all the time, what is the best way to do. Don't just wait for your visit to the doctor and for them to tell you what you can or cannot do. Always ask what can you do at home to support the treatment that is being received. And that is the only way to take care of yourself. So. And everything is an ongoing process, you know, just, the, just like the doctor doesn't give you one pill, it is a series of pills. It's a course that you've got to take. 
same thing with diet, same thing with exercise, same thing with massage, or same thing with, uh, you know, helping your left more. You've got to stay committed to it because it is your body. And only you can help it along. Nobody else can do it for you. Others are just there to support you, but ultimately it's up to you to do that. So, any other questions? I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Now, my, my, my cancer was on the left side. As of right now, I am, um, I have the total, I guess, system for the arm as well as the trunk area. And it seems to me, it may be in my mind, but it seems to me that my lymphedema has gotten worse. Before I used the machine, I would massage my body in the morning. Mm -hmm. But now with the machine, I do it at night. And I, I'm not really feeling comfortable with the machine. So which one do you think is better? You can always and do a combination of the two. Now, how much uh, water are you drinking every day? Well, I try to get at least um, 64 ounces. Okay. And you're moving around? Uh, I am moving around. In the morning, I go to the track. I know I get in seven miles. I'm trying wow. to get... Yes. So when, I, when I'm walking... And I'm swinging my arms. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it could just be something is slowing down. If you want, you can try doing the strokes that I said, especially the number one position. Yes. Just keep doing number one and number two as much as you can. Mm -hmm. And just see if that will, you know, kind of jumpstart your system again. Just drink some water and then uh, start doing this and just see mm -hmm. if it works, you know. Oh, okay. And if it, and it feels like the liquid, I guess the fluid is now going to my back area. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? You know, with, with the left side, it seemed like the, um, the swelling is now going to the back of going to my back. Okay, so is there, um, are you able to reach over there and uh, move it forward? Uh, yes, yeah, sometimes I get my husband to try to um, help yeah. me do that. Yeah. So what you can do is if it is getting to your back, then try, um, you know, then do, I would say, do the one, one, uh, number one position, the number mm -hmm. two, mm -hmm. and then I would start doing, if it is on your left side, then yes, the 12 o'clock position. Mm -hmm. And then on the outside, it is the 10 o'clock and the 12 o'clock, I'm sorry, the 10 o'clock and the eight o'clock. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then just keep following that as much as you can do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So and I can come to your, yes. I'm sorry. And if you have the uh, dry body brush like this, then mm -hmm. you can have your husband stroke your back, uh, you know, uh, from wherever he feels the congestion is like, is it around the shoulder blades at the back? Yes. Okay. Then he can stroke it towards the underarm. Now, did you okay. have any nodes removed in the underarm area or in the left side? I did. I had nine. Okay, then it depends where the nodes were and how it is. And so that is why it's moving. So, okay, so this is what I would do. Were the nodes removed over here in, in the number two area? Uh, I'm not really sure, to be honest. I, I'm not, yeah. Okay, then I would say, well, without knowing where the nodes were removed, it's kind of hard mm -hmm. to direct that. Okay. Um, and that may be why things are, you know, slowing down. Um, okay. But uh, you, what you can try is to move it, instead of moving it towards, uh, uh, on your back, instead of moving it towards the underarm. Mm -hmm. And if this is your um, scapula, your shoulder blade, then you're moving it straight up here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that, that way it's coming down here to this area and it's straight okay. this way. Okay. Okay. Now lymph can be rerouted, so you can push it up and this way. Very slowly. Okay and very gently. You're not, these bristles are already rough and you don't need to press down on your skin. You just let the bristles do all the work. Okay. So it's very, very gentle. And you're doing it on dry skin, but you can also do this in the bath if you want. Okay, thank just you. Just depending on your range of motion. Yeah, of course. Okay, okay then. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm happy to help. Thank you for asking questions. Renuka, is there a place where we can order those brushes? Oh, I just get them online. You can get them. And uh, all the bath uh, section of the department stores, they have these. 
you know, along with the loofahs and sponges, all those things. So now this is a detachable one. You can remove this and just use this part. But I kind of like this because then you can access the full body. And is there a particular brand name that you like better than others? I have not noticed any brand name for these, no. Okay. For the facial brush, I like this brand. It's called Eco Tools, and this is a vegan. So it is, um, it's not harmed any animals, so to speak. And it's very, very super soft and very silky. So if you are feeling particularly sensitive, you know, especially when people have just had, uh, you know, radiation or any surgery, the skin can feel very tender. So you don't want to use something rough like this in that area. You, know, you either use your hand by putting some oil and sometimes in the oil can feel a little, you can feel like as if it's causing a reaction to the skin. So you're better off kind of using this brush. It's very soft and very gentle. So you just do that. Where did you get that brush, Renuka? This I got yeah. at Target. Target? But I know I have seen this on Amazon as well. So you can even order it. Yeah, I've seen this at Target and other stores. Uh, and CVS has it. And what's the name of it again? Eco Tools. Spell that. E -O. Eco. 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 Oh, oh, Eco. Eco. Eco Tools. Yeah. Can you speak on the bras? Should we stop wearing uh, wire, wire bras? I would say if you're home and if you can not wear a bra, that would be really good. And if you're, <laughs> yeah. And if you, I think most, most women would agree with me when you say the minute we come home, we just want to fling it off. <laughs> that alone shows how uncomfortable that creation is, you know. So we should stick to a sports bra since we, you know, have it. Yeah. Sports bra is fine, but like I said, but not all sports bras are comfortable either, you know, and not all mm -hmm. sports bras, it's not like as a sports bra is not digging into your skin. I have seen that also happen. Okay. You know, I'm a massage therapist. People take out the clothes and they lie on the table and we are seeing all these marks on the body. Mm -hmm. And we know, oh, oh, okay, this one is this. Oh, okay, that one goes that like that. Okay, so now how do I modify what I'm working? Because okay. I now have to get the skin to plump up before I start doing any deeper work to the body. Okay. So, you know. So what should um, a person is going to be starting radiation? So what things did you recommend as they're going through the treatments? As well, hydration is something I would recommend. As for the diet and other things, uh, you have to consult with your attending physician. Okay. Um, and uh, they would usually re uh, refer you to a nutritionist or dietitian who specializes in uh, treating cancer patients so that they understand the effects of the treatment on the body. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I think the doctors have now gotten more... Uh, involved with all these other you know, peripheral issues that come about with cancer treatment. Like when my mom was going through, there was nobody to tell her not to even wear a bra or know, know what to do or, what to, or how to go about taking care of yourself or what to eat or what not to eat. But now there are, I think there's a whole dedicated team for this purpose. And, and I think that is wonderful. Yes. They can even tell you what to do, what to apply on your face or not. Like I said, I became an oncology esthetician because nobody could tell them what products to put on their face or how to take care of their face as such. But now people are there to tell. You know? so, and I think that that's a very, very good thing to have a team on your side. And so, Renu, uh -huh. you're, 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 um, you're saying, and I'm just... A, just for um, aesthetic, I guess, visual. Um, I'm in my 50s and um, all through my teens, I always wore a bra like almost 24 hours because I didn't want the gravity to pull it yes. down. Mm -hmm. So how does not wearing a bra, well, now I don't. I mean, I will come home and I'll take the bra off, but how does not wearing a bra, I mean, what are things we can do to keep our um, pec muscles from, or the, the breast tissue 
from dropping? That drop is bound to happen because of two, quite a few things. One is, yes, gravity works on the body all the time. And second is the size of the breast tissue. The mm -hmm. larger the breast, the more it will drop or drag down. Uh, but then some of, the, some of it can be minimized by doing the strokes that I've shown you. Because you're removing all the excess congestion. And I have noticed that myself personally, that after it was done, Mm -hmm. I could feel that my breasts were softer, they felt plumper, and they just felt lighter. And I could not believe it. And of course, when somebody comes to me, you know, I, I, it's not just I'm doing just these strokes alone. I also use the medicupping device that I have. So mm -hmm. that is like a suction thing that clasps uh, um, uh, the breast tissue. And it really lifts and releases the tissue, but it's not harming it in any way. It's not bruising the skin, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, so I do that as well. I do about uh, three rounds of those. So I do one uh, round of medicupping, and then I take it off, and then I do a manual flushing, and I put it back on, and I do another round, and then again take it off, again flush the tissue. Because we want to may also make sure that whatever it has brought up also being drained out properly. right but yeah over time and, and and frankly lymph moves slowly but sometimes even in just one session you can feel the difference and so that sometimes i stop halfway through i have people drink some water and then they continue with the other part okay. so that's how okay. it you can't prevent some things i think that in gravity and uh, age because all said and done, if, if, if the, bre the breast tissue is fat and fat, wherever there's fat, there's bound to be some collagen. And collagen production decreases as we age. Collagen and elastin. And so that's why the sagan droop happens. Mm. But can it be minimized? Yeah. And actually not wearing a bra, especially at home, is really good because as we are walking around, mm -hmm. breasts are moving. The tissue is moving. And that movement alone is sometimes enough to, um, uh, you know, increase the lymph lymphatic movement in the body. If you have access to a mini trampoline, mm -hmm. I think it's called a rebounder. You can mm -hmm. even jump on that very gently. And you don't even have to, uh, you know, um, lift your feet off, off of the trampoline. The feet, if this is the trampoline, and you can just be lifting your heels up and down. As simple as that. And that alone will cause the breast tissue. And not just the breast tissue, it's actually moving the lymph in the whole body. And if you can't do that, like I found that I was not able to do that because I, for some reason I felt I'd fall off it. Mm -hmm. um, so I also looked into something called a vibrating platform. And if you can go, you know, in, if you go to Amazon and you search for vibrating platform, it'll bring up that. It looks like one of those... Um, things that you use for doing step exercises in the gym, you know, what they do. So it just looks like that, but you stand on that and you can adjust the intensity of the vibration. So you always start at the lowest setting and next thing you know, your body is just like shaking and vibrating and you just do that for like less than five minutes. Max mm -hmm. 10 minutes. Nice. That takes up the length in the whole body. And if you feel like it balances off, you place it close to a wall or you know, counter or something that you can hold on to and just do that. And that is an excellent, excellent way of moving them. Wow. Yeah. And actually you could try that too. I don't know, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know the name of the person who asked the question where you felt uh, the lymph was congested in the back. That was Connie. Oh, that was Connie. Yes, Connie. Yeah, Connie, you, you could try the vibrating platform. Yeah, I have one. Well, I have, yeah, my girlfriend gave me one and I was afraid to use it. So now I can use it. How many yes. times a day? Yeah, just even, even twice a day. That's a great place to start. Okay. Yeah. Like five, ten minutes. Yes, five. Let's start at five minutes. It can okay. actually seem like a very long time as we are standing over there vibrating because at any time you start to feel lightheaded, you just turn it off. Okay. Yeah, okay. and don't, don't, don't proceed. And you, know, you, you need to settle down. And again, go drink some water. Okay. Just, you know, pace a little bit here and there. And then, you know, you can try that again. Uh, okay. Time. Yeah. 
Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yes. I'm happy to have helped. Any yes. further questions? These questions are great. Yes. Nina, I was going to tell you that when you have your radiation therapy, they will uh -huh. give you um, some wonderful creams to use to okay. keep your skin soft and lubricated so that you won't get a sunburn. Um, okay. you, you may get a little bit of a sunburn, but they want to minimize that. And okay. so they will give you the best creams that they know of so that you can stay lubricated. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. Does anybody else have any questions? Yes. No? I have one, one more question. Um, in regards to, um, to deodorant, I switched to a natural deodorant because I had read somewhere, uh, like I used to use Dove, uh, but I, f I found that the natural deodorants aren't, they don't work as good as like Dove or Degree. Um, what do you, what do I you- I personally what? don't use deodorants. I've not used them for many years now. Um, because I feel that as long as, see, okay, first of all, we need to use your breath. Why? Because of the smell, right? Do you use it because of the smell or because of the sweat or because of both? The sweat. Mainly because of the sweat? Yes. So you're better off ha having some wipes or even just taking a wet paper towel and just cleaning that area periodically? Because all said and done, it is still chemical <laughs> that you're putting over there, a layer of chemical. And those nodes need to work, you know. They need to be able to, they're filtering out all these um, chemicals that we are exposing our body to, but there's only so much that they can do. What about a salt stick like crystal? That's what I use. I use crystal too, yes. Um, I would say anything, but I don't use anything because I just feel like, first of all, we are shaving the area. So this the smell comes mainly because of bacteria trapped in all the hair that's there. So if you're uh, regularly shaving the area that, that is being clean, it's, that's taken care of. And so if sweat is the only issue, then you're better off just wiping it periodically. Mm. That would be better. Mm. Who is going to sniff at your underarms? <laughs> no one. <laughs> no one. <laughs> so, yeah. I, um, I don't know. People have also tried things with baking soda and all that. And uh, I think now there have been new ones that I saw recently in Target. I think the brand, I can't remember the brand name, but I saw all this lavender and rose and sandalwood and all these kind of uh, fragrances in there. So. Yeah, those are made by Tom. Tom's? Okay, Tom. Yeah, Tom, T-O-M. I use the, um, that's non-aluminum. Has no aluminum in it, says, okay. so. Good. Good. Yeah, yeah, I think that's not, it has now become a personal preference thing. I'm not, uh, I don't know, I'm not for it. I'm not against it. But if you have issues, then yeah, go ahead and use it. I also found that if you have a problem with um, like um, smell mm -hmm. under your arm, that it's your, um, if you're changing your diet mm -hmm. helps the cleaner that you eat, the yeah. better that you smell. It just yeah. happens that way. <laughs> the underarm should smell like sweat. You know, when you have exerted yourself, how you smell sweat on your body, that's what it smells like. But if it's smelling like something else, like say whatever you've eaten. And I know people whose diets are high in garlic. I personally have that fat coming out of their underarms. So as you're working the body. So yes, I do believe you when you say, yeah, the diet uh, can affect that smell. Yeah. Anybody else? Renuka, this was amazing. Thank you, Leslie. And if anybody wants, again, a copy of that, um, this particular page, uh, mm -hmm. then just let me know. You can uh, email me or call me at this number. Or uh, you can also get in touch with Leslie, and I will send one to her as well. So you can pass it on to you. Leslie, would you be able to?